Warning! This podcast contains the Jailhouse Rock. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for Pretty Little Liars, Season 7, Episode 17, Driving Miss Crazy. I'm your host, Dom, and with me is Nikki. Hey. How's it going? It's going. It's going, it's going. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what what were you thinking um, during, during the Jailhouse Rock dream sequence? I wanted to puke. <laughs> Come on, Mona's got a great voice. No, Mona was great. But what the fuck is Arya on? To have that kind of she, dream. She I know was... she's I know she's neurotic and she's anxious, she's paranoid about all the things she's doing. She's she's feeling guilt because of what she's doing to her friends. I understand all that, but to have a musical play in your head as a dream, what the fuck? Did you not see what she was watching on TV? Uh, I guess. Right? But... She fell asleep watching the movie. She's got a lot of things going on, you know, like, it makes sense. It was really out of left field, but, you know, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it was. It was. I think that's what shocked me the most. I mean, Mona, I, I've said it before, she's my absolute favorite character. Whether she's bad or good, I don't care. I love her character. Mm. I love the actress. So, to hear her belting out that the song was, like, it was shocking and surprising. It was nice. But the rest of the ensemble, I was like... What? 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 <laughs> like, I was, like, on the edge of my chair. Like, I wanted to just spew all over everything because it was just, like, I didn't, I, I couldn't connect it to, I mean, I did, but I didn't. It just didn't feel like it belonged. No, yeah, knowing that she was watching what she was watching, it still, it seemed a little bit too over the top. Yeah, oh, of course. The show's always over the top, though. Not like that, though. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Um, I mean, we had an entire episode. Did you not? Did you not remember the uh, the black and white episode that we had? No, I don't remember because yeah. that was the one episode when we started the podcast. I was like, oh, I I forgot to watch it. Hmm. Oops. <laughs> I actually that was I think, my one flub. Actually, I think you were sick that week because um, Mike filled in. Um, on that particular episode. Okay. So. Mm, yes, that's when I was sick. Yep. Yeah. I know exactly when that was. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a kind of a very weird episode, but yeah. So this is definitely not the first time the show's done something crazy like that. But. But that that's a whole themed episode, though. That that's something they also like they they gave us a week and at least two weeks in advance, saying, "Oh, this is coming," you know. It was kind. Of, it kind of was like a staple for that particular part of the season. Yeah. It was just because of the way Spencer was acting and she was being a sleuth and stuff like that, trying to be a sleuth. It was just, yeah, that that was a whole episode themed around this. It was just like one little like, I don't even know how long it went on for because I was like, I was <laughs> skeeving the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, but, like, because Arya's got a lot on her mind, because, like, the start of the episode, we had her and Ezra salsa dancing, and you see uh, Arya's kind of spaced out there, you know, she's got missed A calls, and, you know, she's already worried about missing the A calls in the, the first place, the AD calls, um, and, you know, Ezra can tell, you know, something's not right, and, you know, she she gets the call, goes through, and... You know, uh, AD threatens to send the reports that Arya never filed from six years ago that incriminates uh, Ezra. And, uh, you know, it's all this stuff. And Ezra is like, oh, he's like kind of oblivious. He, he realizes something's going on, but he's kind of oblivious at the same time. It wasn't until he picked out the song for their first dance for the wedding that he really kind of was like, all right, something's wrong. Um, and he thinks that it's Arya having doubts about them for the the relationship, and he even kind of said, you know, I hope you don't still hold, you know, everything against me from, you know, six years ago, which is right around the time where Arya filed the report, you know, filed the reports but never sent them, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. She wrote, she filled them out but never sent them, so. Um, I was like, oh, this is going to come back to bite her in the ass, and, you know, and. 
everything that, that she ended up doing. She she planted uh, a Bluetooth phone, you know, in uh, Spencer's house to sync to her her speakers. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, that caused a whole commotion in the house. And then Arya's reward for that um, was uh, a double puzzle piece. You know, yeah. like, I was like, ooh, okay, here we go. We haven't had a puzzle piece a couple episodes now. Uh, and then, because we were also missing Hannah's, and, you know, so here we are with this double piece, and I'm like, how are the, the girls going to accept that Arya just put a double piece in? You know, because, like, nobody's seen the board now. Nobody saw Arya put the piece in the board. So when no. they go back to play the game, when the game calls, they're going to be like, there's an extra piece here. Where did this come from? And they're going to look around, and they're already suspicious of Arya for being like, what happened? Where's your turn? You know, she, I, I don't know. I'm not I, I'm not in charge of the game. You know, like, she deflects it really quick, and they just kind of shrug it off, whatever. But, like, when she took the envelope to get the, the puzzle pieces, Mona was, was at the brew. Mm -hmm. Right? So Mona sees her. She's kind of smiling. Brian in chat is saying, you know, I'm going to be really upset if Mona ends up being AD. Why? <laughs> why i mean it's, she's been it's, it's she's been little, shifty from the very get-go it's mean, a little too obvious though i i kind of will be too if like i'm not saying i don't true. like mona as the villain but it's just like we had mona as the villain in season one for her to bring the game back like i mean at this point we know that mona is very observant she's very intelligent she's like the smartest person on this show you know apart from maybe uh, Lucas. Caleb. It's a different... No. Caleb has a certain kind of smart, whereas Lucas and Mona kind of more of the textbook kind of deal. Um, but, I mean, they do have their different aspects of where their specialty lies. So, you know, Mona's... She's super observant. She knows how the game is played. She knows the game is being played. So she's obviously watching for all... Every, he's watching every nook and cranny to make sure that all her bases are covered so her ass doesn't get, like, flame on, you know, like, she doesn't get burned. And then well, at the same time, help. The so. girls find out that Hannah uh, Hannah actually brought Mona into the, the circle mm -hmm. of trust with the, the game. And uh, Hannah's like, look, I'm an accessory to this crime just as much as any of you. I changed the windshield that Rollins was splattered yeah. all over. Mona, yeah, she's, so. yeah, definitely. She is part of this, and it's stupid for them to not in, in include her because if Mona, if I'm not saying she did, if Mona messed up in the slightest sense, it could lead back to them. So they need to include her. Yeah. Yep. She's just as much in it as the girls are. So, mm -hmm. you know, if the girls go down, so does Mona. Mona's just as invested as the rest of them. So she's got the everything to gain and everything to lose, you know, from, from playing this game. So, um, you know, just, just like the rest of them. So she kind of throws her hat into the ring, and um, she uh, takes Emily to the fertility doctor who gave who performed the surgery for Allie. Right, that was that was kind of interesting. I like I see. Even Emily started to like pairing up with Mona in the end because Mona has a lot of shit on. She's just she just knows what she's doing, and it's a breath of fresh air because you know none of the other girls know what they're doing so emily saw that right away mm -hmm. she felt it like at first she was like no way i don't want to work with you but then you know she saw how organized and how determined mona was she was like okay we're gonna get shit done but then in the end you see mona being like not today not tonight i no, it's bedtime later gator like no get out of my face get away from my door yeah. um which you know yeah that brings up suspicion for you know Mona being AD, but I don't think I just think she is obsessive and she does like to get into other people's lives. That's why she had the wall, so she well, can break down all the aspects of what's going on, not because she's targeting any of them. Well, she has the suspect wall going on mm -hmm. and everything like that, and I think what she's trying to do is that I don't think this is anything that has been going on for a while. I think this no. is since... This is all since Hannah brought her into the fold of the game. Exactly. I think she's just trying to cover the bases, and she's just really good at covering everything, and making sure that she connects all the dots and, you know, m you know, makes all the tallies and checks off all the boxes. She's just very meticulous. Because Detective Fury 
has gone like really hardcore in in, in this investigation. Right? Mm-hmm. He he questions Hannah and Caleb because uh, they were spotted, you know, in the hotel the day the receipts got flooded and 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 all that. Caleb's the one that that designed the security system for the hotel, and you know, it's all very suspicious. And um, it gets to the point where Mrs. Marin comes back, like. You know, we haven't seen her in how long, Mm -mm. you know, and she comes back, she confronts Caleb. Um, and then you have Hannah going to like cover bases, trying to get the shovels from the, uh, the park ranger from, you know, that they buried Rollins with, Mm -hmm. uh, and they're missing. So the, the, the park ranger assumes that the police took them for testing and, uh, you know, um, and then you have Fury questioning uh, Spencer about her and Caleb's relationship, and if that's why, you know, everything happened the way it happened at the bar, you know, and and uh, if that's why they're covering for her and she's covering for them, and you know, all this stuff is because there were there was uh, a lot of you know they they were together at the time, you know, and all that stuff. And then he starts questioning whether or not Spencer got with him because she needed a cop in her life at that time you know it was and, just and i get what he's trying to do but when it, this goes to court and spencer goes up goes to say you know we had an emotional connection and she brings the whole personal deal into the courtroom people are going to start disapproving his evidence because he had an emotional connection well, to the case. That's exactly why she tells him. Exactly. You know, yeah, come on, the next time you want to interrogate me, do it back at the police uh, station under all the fluorescent lights and we'll see who's embarrassed. Yeah. You and know, and like... I mean, I think it now, because he's done it a couple of times before this, like he's tried to, you know, push, like push this, you know, push Spencer and she pushes back with like, uh, I was just at your house for, mm. you know, I was alone. And, you know, she's definitely, you know, pulling that angle where like, hey, guess what? We were alone and nobody else, like, there's no witnesses. Uh, it's my word against yours. And you're this, supposed to be the professional in this. And it looks like we have and we've had an emotional connection. We've had intimacy. You know, we've yeah. been intimate with each other. So it's like he has to not push Spencer anymore. And he has to go different at, like angles, like go to her friends because the only connection he has to them is Spencer, but it's, it's, if she's not around, it doesn't, it, it, I don't know. It just like, technically, he, I don't think he would mm. legally be able to work on the case because he has such a personal yeah, exactly. connection. But I think that that's been kept under wraps at the police station that he's able to, because nobody knows about it kind of deal. I think Toby was, was only... the only one who really yeah. knew about it. And Toby's no longer with the, the force. Um, he did ask about Toby that one time, wanting to know where he was, probably because of this whole angle with trying to go after Spencer. Yeah. Toby would be the only one being like, uh, dude, you slept with her. And then if anybody else would be like, get away, you, you can't yeah. work on this case anymore. Yeah. But going back to Mona for, for a minute, um, the Brian says in chat, Mona is the one that had the shovels too. And, yeah, we find out that it wasn't mm-hmm. the police that came. It wasn't Fury that came and confiscated the the shovels. It was so, actually Mona. Mona has the. We shovels. don't know when that happened. The shovels could have been there this whole time. The police could have overlooked that fact. They could have. It's not. I don't remember them saying anything about shovels in the last like. No, they didn't. Whole no. season. What I'm thinking is Mona went to the park ranger, posed as the police, and took the shovels. That that's my assumption. I mean, well, she probably didn't even have to. She probably could have just walked up to the building and well, took them. Well, the, the park ranger mentioned the police came and confiscated them because something about a murder. The, the park ranger said that to uh, Hannah, who was okay. trying to pick them up. So that's why I'm saying I think Mona posed as the police to get them. I thought he couldn't confirm that they did or not. He just said they were around, that, that they could have taken No, them. he said they had no shovels because uh, they were taking something about a murder investigation. Okay, so, so maybe, yeah, we know Mona is good at manipulation and, mm-hmm. you know, playing the part, so she definitely could have done that. Yeah. Or she could have somehow gotten them from the evidence locker, because she's also that conniving. That she's, is true, too. She's very, very uh, resourceful, so. That is true, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, like, 
I don't I don't know exactly what's going on with this fertility doctor though with with her and Emily like they they go get some information they get the the donor the the end result of it is they got the donor's ID number right so that'll that's one step closer to finding out who the father of the child is yeah but we don't we don't really know so I think when they find that information out, it's either going to reveal who AD is, or it's going to be something that AD manipulated to get from someone else. You know? I know. I it's. I feel like it's going to be a super weird pair up. Because we know, like, w- we, we know could be that Lucas, it's... it could be Caleb, it could be Peter Hastings, like... Oh, God, ew, you know, ew. I know, I know. I was thinking more of the lines of Jason... It could be. Which, but because we haven't seen him, we've heard of him, like, throughout, like, Allison was visiting him this episode in New York. Mm-hmm. So, I feel, I, I feel like that would be a weird pairing, because... It definitely would. They did mention Jason this episode, and, and he mm-hmm. hasn't, we, we haven't even heard his name, and I don't know how long. Um, but, yeah, because that, see, and I'm thinking in terms of, like, birth defects, because I know, like, you know, you, you get so close into the family genealogy, and, and brother sister kind of first cousins all that stuff causes a lot of like birth defects and and uh issues and stuff like that but i'm wondering now since this is technically emily's egg yeah yeah in... there would be no no i don't know how that works no 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 cuz um the way that that works is it's her it's emily's egg it's emily's dna and if say if it were jason's dna Allison is just carrying the child. She her she doesn't. DNA, put... Her DNA gets involved in that. No, it doesn't. Not in the creation. Not in the the way that the chromosomes connect. Yes, she the the baby will be in her womb and will be you know sharing her blood. But that's just immunities. That's just you know oxygen and immunities. It has nothing to do with DNA. Okay. The whole biology part of it is just sharing um the blood oxygen. Uh, nutrients from the food she eats, uh, immunities from, you know, just, yeah, it, it has nothing to do with the DNA yeah. structure. Yeah, that would be, that would be very weird, though, you know, mm-hmm. be a weird situation, but it, it's, it's totally possible. It's totally possible. Or we could find out that it, uh, um, is possibly even Charles, um, you know, Ooh. sperm banks and, and things like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, it could be something really weird. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. They could have frozen. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if Emily was donating, you know, eggs, you know, men men can do things like that, too. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's possible. It's less involved for men. Yeah. But, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't... Pff, who knows? Who knows who the father could be? I feel like it's somebody we know, somebody we have some kind of connection with. It's not going to be... Or what if it's Ezra? That would be even weirder. Um, you know, but it's it's not going to be like, you know, Joe Schmo down the street, three houses down on the left. Like, you know, it's not going to be somebody we don't know. It's going to be somebody significant. That's the only way. Because um, otherwise you wouldn't have, like, this big mystery. It'd be, it'd be too weird. So yeah. it's either going to be I mean, AD we- or it's going to be just somebody that, you know... We we did mention that like we did throw Noel's name out there for a while and Noel Ren and like yeah the possibility of DNA splicing meaning it could be a, another female um, instead of a male like that that it's very experimental but it's something that this show could do because they've done a lot of other shit that doesn't really you know it isn't really clear right now for us but you know they can do it because it's fiction yeah. More based reality fiction than... I don't think they'd go that far, but, I mean, who knows? I mean, um, it's not the, in the realm of impossibility. It, they yeah. are trying to do things like that right now. Yeah, but I don't think they would go and do something that they haven't actually succeeded with yet. So, it'd just be a little weird, even for this show. Um, but, yeah, I, we mentioned Arya planting the um, uh, the Bluetooth device in the or the Mm -hmm. phone that connected to the bluetooth device um which played uh uh, a conversation that peter had with jessica 
or who he thought was Jessica, but was actually Mary, mm-hmm. um, through the the uh, speaker system for the whole house to hear. Did it seem really auto like on uh, the the female side, like Mary's side of the conversation? Did, did it seem very auto tuned to you? Because it seemed like Peter's voice coming through loud and clear, but I could no, feel like, like there was a little was, mechanical. It seemed like she was more it. distant than than Peter. The it seemed bad like Peter was, or something. It seemed like well, it doesn't sound like it was a phone call that was recorded. It sounded like it was recorded in person somewhere. So it just sounded like Peter was closer to the microphone than than uh, uh, Mary. Maybe. Um, and it was a conversation about burying the body, um, Jessica's body in the, the yard and stuff like that. So it seems like Peter had some knowledge of the death and knew it was buried in his yard and knew who did it. Like he knew all that. Um, so that really kind of like put him in the spotlight of, you know, questionable motives. And, uh, yeah. because of all this, uh, Mrs. Hastings actually forfeits uh, her council seat, which yeah, she very, the Senate. yeah, very, very surprising. She decided not to move, told Spencer she could start on unpacking her boxes. Um, and in the meantime, Spencer had already taken a little trip with, uh, with Mary Drake. They went back to the, uh, hotel because Mary was hiding in Spencer's car. Uh, and they talk and we got to see this, uh, flashback with Jessica and Mary and Peter and, you know, all this stuff, and that's when Spencer starts questioning, you know, her father's intentions and motives and stuff and all this. Mm-hmm. But Spencer ultimately decides that she's not ready to leave town with with Mary. She's, she's not ready to leave her friends or her parents, especially her mom. And uh, uh, She didn't want to leave the people who need her. As yeah, her... and Mary was actually quite understanding. Yeah. Um, and uh, Spencer forgives her. So... You know, that that's, I can't say a happy ending, but you know, they're, they're on the right path. So that's good. I hope, I hope Mary's not involved in, in the AD stuff because, uh, that'd be bad. I don't want yeah, it to cause, be. I don't cause want it to the be. Whole, this, this whole like forgiveness charade that she's been trying to put on for Spencer, like, you know, getting her to forgive her, it would be all undone. Yeah. Yep. And then Spencer would be back to her crazy, not trust anybody self, which she's Mm-mm. kind of on her way back to doing that anyway. So yeah. it would solidify it at that point. Yep. Um, Brian says, what if Toby is the father of Emily and Allison's child? I think that's the most least likely option. Possibly. I don't see that. I don't see that causing a rise out of any of the what, girls. What if it's Fury? Then he really couldn't be connected to this case. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be terrible. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, and then we also we got uh, Caleb and Hannah find out uh, they're they're getting married. Uh, Caleb unintentionally proposed to to Hannah. I mean, uh, not unintentionally. I mean, he meant to do it, but it was yeah. kind of like an improv, like It was more like Hannah's mom being like, "Okay. Now or never." It was like she didn't like really push him, but at the same time no, he's like, "Okay. That, no, I have that's... to prove something to Ashley that I actually do mean to have good intentions with Hannah and I do want to marry her eventually." He's like, "Now I don't is think that's the what best it was. time." I think it was that uh Mrs. Hastings, Mrs. Hastings, um, Marin. Marin. Mrs. Marin was, um, questioning why Caleb was around, because it's like, okay, well, this just got, uh, broken into, it seems like all this crazy stuff is happening again, like, you know, and then you and, and Hannah have been on and off, and now I find out that the two of you are in the hotel, but you're staying here, like, what is going on, you know, just so I know what is going on, that's what it seemed like, um, and it seemed like, Caleb was trying to deflect all the AD stuff um, Mm -hmm. and then just started talking about his feelings for Hannah and realized at that moment that he can't live without her. It was like, as he was talking about it, he was having, he was coming to the realization that he, something he knew all along, you know, but it it was, he was, he was finding it out as he was just talking and it was just all off the cuff happened and he just blurted it out and proposed to Hannah right then and there. It's like, they didn't plan it. 
You know, you saw uh, Hannah, like, tearing up. Like, she wasn't expecting this. This is something totally improv by Caleb. And Usually the other party does has no idea well, about the proposal. So, I mean, I can understand that whole thing. Yeah, bit, but... but I mean, like, I mean, uh, you kind of, you get to a point where it's not necessarily, like, out of left field. You know, like, you no, kind of, like... you kind of know, like, you're on a mutual understanding of, of, yeah, this is probably going to happen at some point, but not then, not when all the crazy stuff was going on. Like, that was probably the last thing on either yeah. of their minds, you know, and, and Caleb just kind of sp spit it out, you know? And sometimes, no, sometimes, not everybody, not not all the time is it a surprise. Sometimes it is a discussion of, mm -hmm. do you want to do this? You, you know, it's not always a surprise. But um, he's just like, look, no, I want to do this, no bells and whistles, so it's going to be like a... A small little ceremony, it seems like, with just close friends. It doesn't seem like it's going to be, like, Arya and Ezra, like, extravagant planning whatever they're doing. Because Ezra's like, I wish it was just, you know, me and her, two people or whatever. And you hear Hannah go, what did I just get uninvited to the wedding? You know, and it's like, you look at that now, that scene, and, and you see, you know, Caleb and, and Hannah were, were um, sitting there talking to Ezra. So, you know, you could kind of... Tell, oh, maybe Caleb was getting some ideas from, you know, everything that was going on with that. Um, but they go camping, and, you know, uh, Hannah brings some drinks, uh, some cigars. They they do this cute little cigar band ring thing. That was really cute of Hannah. Yeah. It was super cute. Like, the, I, I like, look, I, it's kind of had the same reaction as Caleb. was like, when she pulled the cigars out of the bag, like, what is going on here? And then it was just, uh, like, just the rings, really. It yeah. felt like they were actually going to, like, light up the cigars. She just brought them for the little paper rings as symbolism. Yeah. Which was I'm really sure, cute. I'm sure they probably intended on, on smoking them. Um, I mean, it, the cigar, if, if you don't inhale the cigars, they're not awful, you know? Like, you're, you're not supposed I, to inhale them. So I don't think they're getting to the cigars. <laughs> oh no, they definitely maybe not. I, I think she bought them with the intention of like a. I mean, they may, they may, they may have the cigars afterwards. You know, that's that's a thing. I guess, so, yeah. But no, I think she yeah. definitely bought them with the intention of it. You know, the for certain people, um, cigars are like a celebratory thing that you only do like once in a blue moon. Other people, it's like no, let's have a cigar every day. Some mm -hmm. other people are just like, oh, I have a cigar when I play poker. You know, like. You know, it's it's, they, a, it's almost like for a lot of people, cigars are a ritual thing. It happens only at certain occasions. Yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah. Like my my uh, uncle used to do the same thing. Yep. Yeah. So it's a big special occasion. Hannah's like, let's do it. Whatever. So I, I I think that was her intention was to. I don't think it was just for the rings. I think that was just kind of. Uh, um, I don't know, and especially how how we know how ditzy Hannah is. I think it was just kind of like. As she was taking it off to open it to smoke, she's like, oh, this is a ring, you know, like, I think that's where Hannah's brain was going. But, Maybe. Yeah. I don't know, it seemed like one of those uh, situations where she actually thought through. Yeah. I don't know, things are, are coming down to the wire here. We have mm -hmm. uh, three more episodes left of the show. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to come down to... Uh, I don't know. Really soon, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find AD. We're gonna see this whole thing through. Uh, Zarin and Chat asks, uh, "Who is AD?" We don't know. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Uh, if you asked me, you know, a week not not a week. You asked me like a couple months ago. I would have told you it was Arya, but now that Arya is playing the game, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> Right now, the only if it's if it's one of the the girls, the only one that makes sense to me is Spencer, mm -hmm. um, because you still look at it and yes, all the girls have played the game except for you know Arya, which she's still kind of playing the game, working for for AD. Spencer's the only one that was hey go visit a sick friend at the hospital like that that's not a game like that like everybody's overlooking the fact that you know. Arya hasn't had a turn yet, but what about Spencer's turn? That was literally just go talk to Toby. You know, go talk to your your yes. your friend. You know, at the hospital. 
But see, at that point, Spencer still wasn't over Toby. Even when they did that kiss goodbye before him and uh, oh, right. Yvonne left town, um, she was like, I need one last kiss. She's not like that was the torture for her. That was the part of the game for her was going to Toby, who has obviously moved on and is mourning over his fiance. Um, and, you know, try to have a decent conversation with him without trying to fall in his lap at the same time. Yeah. No, I get it. But I'm also saying if Spencer is the one in control of the game, that doesn't look too bad yeah. either. You know, that's, that's right. something she wants to do anyway. So um, just, you know, throwing that out there. Um, but at the same time, a lot of the game is, is around, you know, uh, Mary Drake and, you know, it, it's... You know that, you know, she's got some resentment to her father. She could have been directing Arya to put the Bluetooth thing in her own house to put on a show for her parents. You know, that could have been a whole thing. You know, the, like, just because Arya was doing this stuff to set up, you know, whatever in Spencer's house does not disclude Ar uh, Spencer I'm, from the fact that it could I'm have been her. I'm not excluding Spencer at all. Yeah. I'm saying that, you know... For Spencer, that part of the game where she actually had to go talk to Toby was actually probably traumatic for her, and 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 it doesn't seem like like for for a lot of other people, it, it, in comparison to say what happened to Hannah with with her Hannah um Hannah Hannah with with her you know uh when she when she had to dress up in Chinese attire and go talk to you know like that part of her it, it seems like it's a lot more um, impactful, mm -hmm. but. That is her career. That's, you know, her future. Whereas for Spencer, she's a very inside person already. It's probably, like, it probably tore her up even more. Yeah. I'm just saying that, like, if, if Spencer's in control of the game, that seems like a really oh, easy yeah. thing, you know. To, Definitely. Oh, I want to go see him anyway, so I'll just make that my game. You know, like, go do something that you wanted to do anyway. Um, where Arya, Arya wouldn't be directing herself. We wouldn't be seeing scenes of Arya alone crying and sobbing, you know, like, if she was in on it, um, you know, I, I mean, I can't disclude Emily either, you know, because, yeah, her eggs were stolen, she knew where her eggs were, she probably knew the facility, she could have stole her own eggs, she could have, uh, you know, had this thing set up to, she could, she could be involved in this, and then plant them in Allison, plant her eggs in Allison, and finally get together with her, you know, something she's always wanted, and, I mean, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, Allison's definitely not involved. There's no way. So we could disclude Allison, we could disclude Arya, but we can't disclude Spencer, we can't disclude Emily. I don't really think we could disclude Hannah, um, but Hannah is a little ditzy, so she seems like the, the obvious choice to, to disclude, but or exclude. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that gives more reason to not overlook her. Because it could be See, an act that she's playing, too. It, for, okay, uh, I know a lot of people that um, are actually very intelligent. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to face-to-face uh, -face social interactions and things like that, they are complete dittas. Like, you would think they are really stupid. But when it comes to, you know, organizing and, you know, um, planning, strategy, all that stuff, they are absolute geniuses. So, right. you know, Hannah could be one of those people. Where it's just social interaction makes her awkward and makes her spit out the wrong words, you know, use the wrong phrases and metaphors and stuff like that. It, it happens to people. I mean, it does, and but you could also play that off, too, because I'm not one of those people, but I could very well play that part. Oh, of course. You know, um, I can act really stupid, and you would, if you didn't know me, you would think that that's... That's how I am, you know? Um, you've seen that from me myself. I play really dumb at times. And uh, other people are just like, what? And you're sitting there laughing because you know that I'm in on, you know, you're you're in on like a joke with me because I'm not I'm not being dumb. You know, I'm, I'm playing dumb, you know? So everybody else is just like, what? You didn't know that? Like, what are you talking? You know, I don't know. So uh, Brian asked where Paige was this episode. She's already moved. She's gone. Yeah. She uh, she shared that uh that one episode she shared her last drink with Emily and she went and stalked Allison and hung over her face while she was sleeping and then asked her like creepy questions and then after that she's gone. She's left Rosewood. I think. I don't know. She didn't, we didn't 
we get it didn't get confirmation that she left, but I think she did. Yeah. So, uh, and Brian says, "Why would Hannah torture herself, though?" Um, you know that's that's part of it. Is is you kind of have that. You have those those scenes of of Hannah being tortured, but um, I'm not saying that Hannah was the one that cattle prodded herself in the barn because that was the dollhouse. That was something um, different. That was uh, that was Charlotte, right? That was that was during the time of Charlotte and and stuff like that. Um, so that was not her torturing herself. I think AD is somebody who who potentially picked the game up after that. Um, and if you if you're referring to the uh, the shoe store um, incident, Caleb was there. She could have just you know acted that out because she didn't know when Caleb was going to be watching. Kind of deal. You know, we don't know for sure. I- I, I mean, we did see screws come through the like, screw guns come through the wall and stuff, and you know. Yeah. But like, as far as the 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 machines running on their own and her getting scraped or burned or whatever, that that could have happened. You know, that's a glitch easily. But like, there were screw guns coming through the wall, so I think that part was more um, whoever was manipulating Jenna at that point. So yeah. that's AD still. Yeah, it could be. But. I mean, uh, it's unlikely for Hannah. I'm just saying you can't really count yeah. her out. It's unlikely. No. I I do agree. Hannah wouldn't torture herself. No, but it, it's but, it's uh, unlikely. It's Hannah. If yeah. if I had to make a wager, it's Spencer. Um, I wouldn't rule out Emily. Um, but Spencer's still my number one choice if it's one of the girls. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, at this point, I don't want to even guess a girl because. They all have tor- been tortured in some way or some, like even this whole yeah. season, like this last bit of the season, like, yeah, they could all be acting the part, but if they weren't, like, if they were part of a, why would they do half that shit to themselves? Like you were saying with Spencer, you know, her, her part of the game was a little bit lackluster in comparison to everybody else's, but still, why would she do that to herself? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't see that as torture. Um but, like, uh, you know, you got to remember a lot of stuff that happened the other season stuff was not necessarily them, you know, because we had Mona involved at some point. We had Charles mm-hmm. and Charlotte and, you know, all these other characters that were, were doing stuff. So you can't even look at as far back as, like, these other seasons. What you got to look at with AD is, like, the stuff that's been happening this season specifically. And you look in, and Spencer is kind of still uh, a manipulated um, of, like, you know... Um, She's still kind of manipulating the the girls around her, uh, even not if she is AD, like she's still manipulating the girls around her as Spencer because you're she's you're so seeing judgy. Oh well, you're seeing God. you're seeing that and you're seeing how like um, she got she manipulated Caleb and Hannah into destroying the the receipts, you know, and, and all that stuff. She's manipulating these people to do stuff for her. Yeah, it's helping. Yeah, they're all kind of in it together, but. It's still a form of manipulation. So Spencer's still really good at it. So if it's one of the girls, she's number one on my list. So, you know, that's that. Um, next episode is called Choose or Lose. The Rosewood PD turn up the heat on the liars, causing loved ones to try and close ranks. Arya's recent collaboration with AD comes to the attention of a surprising source. Mona. That's my assumption. Um, Not surprising. <laughs> AD presents the Pretty Little Liars with a choice designed to drive a wedge between them. Meanwhile, everyone tries to find a bit of happiness and spend what could be their last night of freedom with the ones they love before all hell breaks loose. Toby returns to Rosewood, and Arya makes a horrifying discovery. So, we do get to see Toby again. So that'll be Mm -hmm. good. Yeah, I mean, it was just uh, Caleb and Toby up in the cabin fishing. Yep. So Caleb came back, so why not Toby? Yep, exactly. Toby probably so. stayed behind a little bit. Yeah, or just took his time, you know. Yeah, he needed he needs some time by himself after everything that happened. So, yeah. all right. So I think that about does it. Nikki, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter at Lady Venom Twenty Four, L A D Y V E N O M Twenty Four. You can find me down below at Phenomenon P H E N O M E D O M. You can find us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, G Plus, Twitter. <laughs> and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. 
coming up next is uh, iZombie. iZombles. iZombles. See you guys later. Laters. <laughs>